Well, this program is entitled Increase Your Success with LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Imagine why. Imagine what you're going to learn here. Exactly. I'm going to cover things that are specific to what Sales Navigator can do for you incrementally above and beyond what LinkedIn itself can do. Okay? So we are going to talk about the other platforms, but because there's something better or something different that you need to know about. So I've got a lot of credentials. I've been in the industry a long time. My path to here comes through the technology world. So I was a technology sales engineer. So everything I do is sort of in the eyes of that. All right, I bend things into certain situations that involve like, is it hardware or software, right? Okay, so I want to cover first of all why LinkedIn is so important. And a lot of that has to do with the B2B nature of LinkedIn. This is where the B2B people are. It's where they're located. So we go to where the party is. The party doesn't come to us. We go to LinkedIn. That's where it's all happening. Okay. We also are, serve as a, a magnet for great talent for people to come to our organization, you know, not having to pay for recruiters and the like, right? And one of the main reasons is that there's this great depository of data Okay, it's free data that LinkedIn has. And LinkedIn has this, okay? Sales Navigator doesn't have this. LinkedIn has this. And it's updated by users. So your data gets out of whack pretty quickly when it comes from another source out there if it isn't updated frequently. And the most frequently updated data is from users, right? That's right. So everyone uses LinkedIn, and some folks use Sales Navigator as well see some folks have both of them LinkedIn and Sales Navigator and they're separate programs they're different LinkedIn is what everyone has and you can pay for a little more LinkedIn okay but over here it's LinkedIn and you're paying for a little more LinkedIn or you can get Sales Navigator and get two things okay? kind of like you might have you know uh, uh, Excel and Word right you might have multiple things so what uh, what LinkedIn does is it offers you all of these sort of features these are common to everyone you can't really be on LinkedIn unless you take advantage of all this sort of stuff right but with Sales Navigator you get a little bit more so let's build up to it the free user of LinkedIn gets what I showed you there everything all right for sixty dollars you can get just more of what you saw LinkedIn gives you with me or you can spend $80 a month, just $20 a month more, and get Sales Navigator, and you get more. See, you get more with Navigator, and you really do. You get all this stuff. And most of this is sort of data-oriented, don't you think? I mean, this isn't social. It's not talking about their shares or their likes or their scores or their Instagram or anything like that. It's just basic data functionality. Now, it would be nice if that data functionality was more integrated perhaps okay there are some shortcomings to the technology here but still pretty sweet so when you're searching on LinkedIn you get 11 filters with LinkedIn.com 11 okay and they're good they're really good but there used to be more it used to be like 17 or 18 features right and now there's only 11 some of them were taken away and they're over in sales navigator where they join many other features out there particularly in searches doing filters so what this has done is created this mass migration you could say over to sales navigator the take away and the put in the take away put in part just got a lot of folks moving on over to sales navigator so let's talk about how to sign up for it all right so you can get a free month when you sign up most folks are going to get this little red this little square in the upper right corner that says you know start a one month free trial Okay, if you've already gotten a subscription before, some sort of free trial, you might not get this, but the place is the same. 
right up over here okay right up right up over in the in the upper right corner over there of your screen is right where I show and that's where you kind of get things started all right but what you want here is that you want the sales version and when you get there you want the professional version just kind of like I show all right so when you come on in to do your next little clickeroo through here it's gonna want you to sign up for a year at one time and I don't suggest you do that I suggest we keep it on a monthly basis if you see what I mean so just go ahead and get the get the free month trial okay to get that off the off the off the ground right might as well it's 80 bucks right and then let it just continue on I think it's gonna be really hard for you to say no more uh, once you've had sales navigator account so I'd like to talk the next level through with its sales navigator and how it can help you with partnering when I talk about partnering and stuff, chances are most of the products and services that we have, that we work with, go with something else. Hardware goes with software, right? Cars go with fuel, go with leasing. Everything goes with something, right? It's part of a meal. So think about it. What goes well with what I sell, right? When I sell this, I'm selling servers maybe, right, I'm on the hardware side. There's all these other little things that get touched on when I do some sort of work. You know, that might be that we have to visit all the, all the desktops, much less so now, right? But this is the time where you might make a network upgrade, right? You might put on some, some agents on the workstations out there. You might train up folks on the new stuff. Someone's going to write the paper for this, right? Someone's going to fund it, so there's a whole money aspect. So if you've got this sort of current partner, you know, a, a, a motorola -y sort of partner out there, right? You can find other partners that are like them with Sales Navigator. This does not work with LinkedIn. This is just a Sales Navigator deal, see? So right over here on the right, when you, when you have someone in view in your searches on Snap, on Sales Navigator, you can just click over the little three dot menu here and you can see similar people. They're using the big data principles of LinkedIn to find similar people here. And you see how powerful that is, right? They're just finding other folks. And, and they're using, I, I, don't, I can't tell you the principles they use, but they work pretty well. You're going to find that folks at the same kind of job level in general. They're going to might be in the same area of the country. They, they do a pretty good job. I find software people in Minneapolis always in, the, in that category because that's a big group that I work with, for example. So I want to talk about what your LinkedIn network looks like so that we can understand the differences between Sales Navigator and LinkedIn because your LinkedIn network is the same for both. You don't have a Sales Navigator network. It's a LinkedIn network, but Sales Navigator looks at it a little differently. So here you are, you're, you're, in, you're at the top of your little, your little triangle here, and below you are folks that you're connected to. They're ones, okay? And they're in a whole separate category. Ones are in a whole different category than twos and threes and all, right? But there you go, and, and, and the folks that you're connected to have their folks and their folks down below, and as they connect to you, they move up to the front row, and the front row gets as wide as it needs to. The width of the front row is 30,000 connections, and I've been at 30,000 connections since 2009. So you have to delete people to add. The, the front row is the only row that, that is segmented or capped. There's no maximum number of twos or threes you know what I mean. So the place to look for your network out, out here is right off the main, the main menu here, Met network right there. And there's your number. You jump right on into it and you can see these folks in chronological order. So the most recently added folks are sitting there at the top for you. There's some other sorts by last name and first name. They don't make really any sense at all. So just enjoy what you get here, right? You will enjoy what you have because you have no other options for sorting. We used to have much better options for sorting than that. So in getting into searches now, there's a difference between LinkedIn.com and Sales Navigator and searches. It's really big. So if we're talking about a specific person we're looking for, we got a name now, and we're going to go find them, right? 
someone very specific. So if they have an uncommon name, it's no big deal, right? Just boom, we'll put in their name and LinkedIn at the top and we'll see this person or maybe a couple people with this uncommon spelling, but they're gonna pop from the list. It's pretty easy to find them, right? Not always the case though. I deal with folks that have more common names, if you know what I mean. And when more common names, you're gonna have to just put in a little bit more. You know, maybe a location, industry, you know, some, something else, company. There's always something more you gotta put in when you got someone who's got a really common name, if you know what I mean. So if you don't have a very specific person you're looking for, but a type of person, then we get into targeting. And targeting is another animal. And I'm gonna go into targeting a bit here. Well, didn't I say we had more filters with Sales Navigator than we did with LinkedIn.com? And that's especially important when we're talking about targeting. So these are the fields we're generally going to use in our targeting. Starting with keywords, very important. They're the first one here. I'll, I'll share that in a moment. But then kind of the flow kind of goes down this way to add other filters where they apply. And some of these filters have very sales navigator specific upgrades or they're just not available at all in some cases. So, but you have to put in keywords first, okay? And, and the reason is as soon as you put in keywords with anything else, it just blanks out the screen. So why do you want to do any sort of work and then add keywords later and just blank out everything? It's a kind of a bug in LinkedIn, all right? But you have to live with it. In this case, we live with the, the keyword bug, all right? So do the keywords first and then toggle on through, on through the others. So I have my keyword there. It's uh, Internet of Things in this particular case, right? So now I'm going to go on to job titles. And job titles are kind of, kind of tricky here. Because we've got this and and or and not stuff, this Boolean stuff that comes into play in job titles. It comes into play in, in the headline area as well, in, in the keywords, and in, in, in certain areas where ors and ands, especially keywords and job titles. And I'm going to go through the job title example here. So just see some kind of examples of how, how the, the ands and ors and not Boolean stuff is used as we just kind of scroll through few of these here, right? We get it? And then, you know, the not commands are what you do to filter people out that accidentally get pulled in. You know, if you were a former CEO, we can try to weed them out, for example. We might be retired, or there might be some other words. You could have a whole bunch of not commands, and that just comes from having done this quite a bit. You learn a lot about it just by doing it. You put it all together into a big, long string, and your string might have three times as many words in this by the time you get done, okay? So let's go through these one at a time. I'm gonna kind of wrap it through the search options here, okay? The fields, one at a time. And some of these are, you'll see are LinkedIn, some are Snap, some are, some are both, all right? So keywords applies to everything, all right? And always work with keywords first, talked about that, okay? Relationship, the ones, twos, or threes, that's universal as well. All right, so, so if you're going for ones out there, probably because you're gonna message them. If you're going for twos or threes, it's probably because you're gonna invite them to connect. But this is how you can segment your search results out like that, right? So under company, there's two ways to look at companies. There's a, in, in LinkedIn.com and in Sales Navigator, there's a way to type in the name of a company. But you don't wanna do it in the wrong spot. And as you start, you'll see the drop-down box approach is better, better, the drop-down box, right? So in that approach, try to match up with what's there. And sometimes it's kind of easy, you know, sometimes it's kind of, it's, it's kind of not. You'll see kind of what, what we mean by that in a moment. So the job title component is where our ors and ands and nots are. And we're going to write that somewhere else outside of LinkedIn, right? In a Google Doc, let's say. And we're going to copy and paste that in to LinkedIn. Okay, so this is a field where we're not going to write here. You see, you can only see so much of it anyway, right? You can only see so much of it. So that being the case, we're just going to take advantage of the fact that we can see it all in a Google Doc or all in a Word Doc, right? Okay. So there are ways that you can, you can segment these searches and say, I just want to apply these principles to someone else's network. And that's not what I'm going to discuss here, but this is part of the really killer stuff especially with Sales Navigator, but in general, it works in LinkedIn pretty well as well to farm someone else's network. But I'm not teaching that, that here, but that's possible. So in the location scenario, we, we've got locations in, in, uh, in, in LinkedIn itself that have to do with the city you're in 
and the country. City and country. You can add multiple cities and multiple countries. You can multi it up. But you don't have all the filters you do over as you do in Sales Navigator. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. That, uh, that, that in, in LinkedIn.com, you know, if, if zip codes are great, you know, but they're not in LinkedIn.com. They're only in Sales Navigator. But cities are really good. And if you're working on a city basis, LinkedIn.com's got a lot of good stuff there for you. So next up, you might, you might segment things by certain industries. Right? There's 147 industries out on LinkedIn. So of those 147 industries out there, there might only be some that are particularly good for you. Now important to note here, by, by default, you've picked all 147 industries. Okay? And as soon as you click on one industry out there, you're unclicking on 146 others. All right? So there's a really good list to be had of the industries. You can see the list up over here to see how that how that looks right the list right there so I have to I have them in a downloadable format um, in a printable format right there at the URL you see so those industries you pick them and you can pick multiple industries from the list and all schools are similar to kind of kind of to the company there's a place that's not so good to put them as you see because it doesn't match from a drop-down list and then there's the other way so schools kind of go the same way as, as, as the companies do. Pick it from the drop-down list. So, so didn't I say there was more with Sales Navigator, right? There's more. So let's get into stuff that's very specific to SNAV, all right? So first is, is, is current job titles. So in the current job titles, I mean, you know, jobs that, are, that say, you know, to present on the profile instead of 2014 to 2018, that wouldn't be current, okay? It says to present, okay? So now we're targeting folks that are just really do fit our, our criteria and they're still doing it, okay? So if you used to own a, a printing company and nowadays you are in the pizza business, LinkedIn still says you were what you were. You were still the CEO in that, in that territory out there because they make no delineation. LinkedIn.com doesn't. But Sales Navigator does. You could say, I only want to see past, I only want to see current. It's usually only want to see current that we want to see. All right. So you might target sp people within a specific area of the company, not just by job title, but like by a function sort of. Not really function in the sense of LinkedIn here, but where they are in the decision making role, right? Do they manage other people? Are they in executive management? Are they entry level people? This will help you if that's the way you like to work it as well. But when we get into locations, that's where there's some real granularities between LinkedIn.com and Sales Navigator. and We really got to be careful here. Most people do care where their targets are located. Some care a lot. Maybe certain zip codes or parts of town. In other cases, it's certain countries or states or whatever. Let's go through the process. All right. So if you're calling on a country LinkedIn.com and Sales Navigator work out just fine. They both do countries. They do it equally well. If you're looking for a city, greater Denver area, greater San Francisco area, greater Minneapolis, St. Paul area, that sort of greater area principle, they both work really well there as well. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if, it, if it's a really big city, you know, North Dallas, South Dallas, you know, those kind of things. Uh, San Francisco as well. If it's a really big city, then, then maybe the zip code area comes into play. Now, these zip codes are where people live for the most part. It's not where the business. If they live in the suburbs out there, you're going to catch them. If they live in the city out here, you're going to catch them. Wherever they live, all right, and, and it could be far away from where the business is sometimes. And I have clients where that really matters a lot. You only get the zip code component in Sales Navigator. It used to be part of LinkedIn. It's not anymore. Okay. Next, another one that matters, and this one really matters when you're trying to do things systematically, as in LinkedIn campaigns where you're just trying to, you know, this week's, this week's, this week's, chop it up, right? States are a great way to do that, and this is only with Sales Navigator. So many of our campaigns start out in Minneapolis, and then we do Iowa, and we do Wisconsin, we do Illinois. We do the hard stuff later, the K-1 
California, the coasts. We do Texas later. We do the East Coast later. So you learn your stuff on the easier things, and then you can go to maybe where things, you know, there's more at stake there. So there's a small, medium, large principle that comes into play when you've got Sales Navigator and companies. If you target really, really big companies out there, okay, the, you know, there's certain people that do that. There are certain people that target smaller folks, like the home folks, right? Most folks, though, are looking for somewhere in between, companies in between the biggest and the smallest, whether it's somewhere on that scale there. And Sales Navigator lets you do that as well with a company size filter. Now, this company size filter is actually comes down to this. Okay, there's an interesting story here. This number doesn't come from the person. People don't have a company size. This company size filter comes from the most current job on their job titles, under, under their jobs, under experience, and the company page associated with it. So they might work for 3M, but if they don't pick 3M from the drop-down list and are attached to the company page, they're just a little company with 3Ms. Do you know what I mean? So that's where that comes from, okay? So it's, it's a good piece of data, but it's not perfect out there because some people don't pick the company from the drop-down list out there. Um, that mark, that data is put in by a marketer. It may not be accurate, you know. For uh, There's a lot of folks that have no company page at all because they just don't work for a current employer that has, you know, a company page that has something out there, all right? So uh, nowadays, this is kind of a new filter that it has to do with years of experience. And if you deal with folks more in decision-making role, you might pick the 10 plus. Now in this case here, uh, even if you pick 10 plus years of experience versus all, all of everything, it only eliminates about 15%. Most folks on LinkedIn have more than 10 years of experience and it shows that. So this will weed out some young people out there perhaps but it doesn't have a big effect, all right, because most folks on LinkedIn are in the upper category anyway. There's so many more little filters and some of them play in certain cases and some don't play. Most of them don't come into play in other cases, but uh, the field out here has 29 fields, and I say it's a lot, right? So when you're doing these searches, by the way, all right. So you're doing your searches and you're and you're getting things just the way you want it, right? You got the, just the zip code there and the boolean there and the industry there and the years of experience there and there, there and there, right? As you do that, those 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 criteria get embedded in the URL at the top. Okay? That long URL gets longer and it gets so far out you can't see it anymore. It's all the way gone. But these URLs are a great way to come back to these searches, to rerun them, to maybe make a new search out of it. File save as, right? Sort of principle. Let me just, let me try the East Coast version of that search. And I'll save it again and I'll save it again. So you keep this little list of these searches around that you can just go back to quickly and just make a quick little change and all. And, and, and in terms of our time here, we're always starting from something that exists from scratch, almost always, nine out of 10 times, there's some baseline URL that we start with to make our new searches from. We don't go back from scratch. So this is what it looks like. At the top of the screen, you see the whole big HTTP sort of thing out there. We're just gonna highlight it, and it'll all highlight. If you just click up there, it just goes all highlighted anyway. And copy paste, you know, Control C, Control V. What right click, copy it. Well, however you do it, and paste it into well, I like a Google Doc best for this. And you can see if you look inside of the blue letters there, you can see the words, and you can see little ampersands and stuff. And you can reverse engineer a little bit of this here. This is what we do. We're experts. I've reverse engineered every single filter on LinkedIn.com, Sales Navigator a whole bunch of other places, and I know all the significant digits on it here. This is all you got to know, though. Let's just save it like this. So I think it's really powerful to go back in our past and sum up those and shore up those relationships from folks that we used to work for. Folks that you maybe weren't so big of friends with, you just happen to be at the same company, will still connect and still do great things for you because 
is part of nostalgia. Do you know what I mean? You know, 25 years ago we were younger, you know, at least I was younger. <clears throat> we were all younger 25 years ago, right? But, you know, we were doing things back then It might have been a happier time. If you can go back to the 90s and connect with folks that you worked for in the 90s, it was like, oh, what a great time to be working, right? So I'll, let me show you what kind of what you can do there, all right? So on your, on your profile, you've got, if you've done this right, you have that in, at, former employer on your profile, in this case, CompuCom, right? So when you, when you click on the icon there, or even the word CompuCom, you come to the company page, essentially, and you can see there's a whole bunch of people list CompuCom. And go, back, go back in time now to be able to do some things here to, to, to invite and meet people, just see a list and scroll through the list of folks. You can do a little bit more over on Sales Navigator with this, of course. You can always do more over there, it seems. So we would do that here. We could see kind of who's currently there and who's not and all. But we want to go back and invite, invite former coworkers and stuff using the kind of same principles that we would anyone else. You know, maybe have a, a piece of standard text that we copy and paste in and add some more stuff. But that's the way to kind of shore up. And, and that's where Sales Navigator has a better utility there because you can see past and current, right? So account-based selling is the next component that works really well with LinkedIn Sales Navigator. You can actually save accounts. You can save leads. These are terms that we all know really, really well. Okay. But to get started, to make it you know, more time-saving for us all, we're going to set some defaults. Just like with, with, the, with the basic search URL that I described before that we saved and copied and pasted that, this is a similar way to do this here. Over, over in Sales Navigator, all right? It's a little bit redundant, okay? But it's, it's, it's higher up the, up the food chain here. So we're gonna go into our settings and we can see the kind of settings we can, we can do here. And with just a touch of the button, we can just paste this on in, right? It doesn't work good for, for the fancy Boolean stuff, but it does work good for checkboxy stuff, as you see. So with LinkedIn Sales Navigator, we can do some big elephant hunting sort of stuff. We can take down big companies, and there's a way to do that using account-based selling. And in account-based selling, we find, <clears throat> we find the company first, and then we go after people at the company using a very systematic approach, all right? So with Sales Navigator, we just have these features. We just cannot really effectively do this without it. Got our big account and you know, we're going to take that account down, right? And, and at that account, as we take that account down, we got them in our system out there, certain people are good. Certain people are much better than others. And we're going to save them as a lead. So we're going to save this. We're going to save that and see it in nice filtered lists. Okay, so let's take a look how we add someone as a lead, right? Right from their profile. Now this is from their profile as being seen in Sales Navigator. Okay, this isn't their profile over in LinkedIn.com. This is over, over in Sales Navigator. So we just save them like that. So let's let's talk about now how to specifically get to the to the accounts. That's how to find a person and save them as a lead over there once some th certain criteria has been met. Well, There's this little drop down box, and over here we're going to go now and search for accounts. It's not all that it's quacked up to be. Many of these filters just really don't apply. But the others do, and they're kind of the same filters we talked about before in terms of the size of company and keywords, and some things like that, right? So there's some good ones there, okay? But not so many, you know? Account-based selling on the LinkedIn search side over in Sales Navigator, not so powerful. Really powerful for people, less powerful for this, for example. But there you see uh, here, here are how we can put in our, our criteria here, our, our quick criteria, just boom, you watch and boom, just populates just like that. Kind of helpful, no, kind of helpful. So you can see now though, that I've got too many results here. I need to segment things down, I have too many results. So the reason I have so many results out here is because my criteria is too wide. I need to narrow my focus down a little bit. So I can only see a thousand of these results out here. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to filter it down. I'm going to segment it. In this case here, I'll just put in Texas, for example. How's that? So now we're, you know, 600 some results and we can work with that, right? So working within the account here, you can see I've got my list of accounts 
and I'm gonna pick one here. I'll pick, I'll spell, I'll pick this account here, and you can see we kind of got a top, a middle, and a bottom of the page, and different pieces that kind of, that kind of go in there, right? So, so there's our company. We'll, we'll look at the employees, right? We want to save them. We'll look at our employees, and here we are. These are the kind of employees that they think match our criteria the most. And if we have any, any sort of job titles and stuff to get to, to things previously, it learns from this sort of stuff. So you can see who you're connected with there. You know, I'm not connected directly with anyone, but you know, I've got some second level connections. So when we go talk about specific people at those accounts, see, see what I mean here? See what I mean? These are people here now in this, in this, in this list here. We're going to go after them. So we're going to save them as a lead. Save them right from the list. We showed you how to do it from the profile before. Now I'm showing you how to do to save it from a list. Okay, so yeah, there we go. See, save as a lead from the profile. All right? So if you really don't want to be connected with someone anymore, you know, you know, you just you can you can pull it back. You can you can unsave the lead. You can unconnect. You can unsave someone as a lead. So, one of the reasons that this is so useful is you can monitor the activity of these people. So, on the home page of Sales Navigator, you can see just the stuff from the folks that are leads from the accounts. Just their stuff. Over on LinkedIn.com, you see stuff from everyone in your network over here. You only see folks that you specifically care about. And it's right there on the homepage. I mean, it's just wonderful, right? You can see whether it's accounts you want to see, lead stuff you want to see, whether it's news or posts or what. It's great, huh? Well, this is how we can help. <clears throat> we can help you by kind of putting all this sort of stuff together into some sort of an action plan for you. Okay? And, and that, that involves, you know, having a really good profile is kind of the first step to things. We can write that profile for you. Second is I do this sort of coaching in a one-on-one -on -one sort of program like we talk about here, very often over, over Zoom or Skype. Um, fr from there, um, we do training of teams. You know, very often 20, 50, 100 people or so in a room, very often hands-on, so they're tapping on keys for half a day or more, right? And then I can teach you how to do some of these principles here that use Sales Navigator to drive LinkedIn campaigns. And a campaign is that segmented search out there that has those filters that only Sales Navigator has particularly like by states and zip codes. Those are powerful tools out there. So anyway, I'm Mike O'Neill. I hope you learned some good stuff about Sales Navigator from this.